gas furnace venting categories. In order for a furnace to operate properly, we need to be able to make sure that it is uh, properly vented. Okay, so how a furnace operates and is influences definitely on how it is categorized and how it is invent, uh, vented to the outdoors. Uh, we have two real main factors that will determine how well or how poorly a furnace is actually going to vent. The temperature of the flue, of the flue gas, and the pressure of the flue gases or the, the pressure inside the vent itself is what's going to determine uh, how well we are actually venting any sort of gases that are in the space. Based on these two factors, every furnace is categorized by a number based on its vent construction and venting characteristics in accordance with the National Fuel Gas Code Book. Every uh, state has to follow the uh, some sort of guideline to on what we can and cannot do with the venting of any sort of fuel gas. The National Fuel Gas Code Book, however, is a standard published by the International Code Council. So when we are looking at furnace categories, we are, they are basically broken down into four different categories, category one, two, three, and four. When we are thinking about this, we have to think about what they are actually constructed with. So your category one furnaces, uh, these furnaces are negative pressure venting and are non-condensing furnaces. These types of furnaces have flue temperatures that can reach at least 140 degrees. Um, in some cases even higher than that. Some of them can actually get up to probably about 160, 170 degrees. Uh, there is very little condensation that's going to form inside the flue pipe, inside the chimney with these types of uh, furnaces. They are much older style furnaces, probably some of your 70% your style uh, standing pilot type uh, furnaces are going to be more likely a category one type furnace. And they are vented by natural convention, which means that basically the hotter the air going up the flue, the faster it's going to vent. Your Category 2 furnaces, these furnaces are also negative pressure vented, but are condensing type furnaces. Okay? Category 2 furnaces are going to actually require special venting material. Um, your Type 3, these are also positive pressure, non-condensing type furnaces that are also require special venting material. Uh, however, a lot of the times if you're going to see a type 2 and type 3 type uh, furnace, it's going to be used uh, stainless steel uh, material for its venting. Uh, however, due to their limited applications and high installation costs, we really do not see a whole heck of a lot of category 2, category 3 furnaces uh, being used in residential heating applications. However, you may run into them um, in industrial and commercial type applications. Your type 4 or category 4 furnaces, these are positive pressure condensing furnaces. The flue temperatures can reach below 140 degrees and as a result the flue gas condenses and drain away in liquid form. So category four furnaces are high efficiency furnaces with a secondary heat exchanger and have the ability to use PVC for your venting. So when we're thinking about our venting, we have to take into a lot of different factors that's going to ensure that the, the venting is actually at its peak and it's doing what it's supposed to do.
Yeah, no matter what, we're going to have oil and gas fired equipment. And each one of those types have to have a vent. And those vents have to be vented to the outside. But what do we have to do to get it there? So as a technician, we must consider the following factors when installing a vent system. We got to think about the furnace capacity. We have to think about the heat load of the building, the types of flue pipe that's being used, the length of the flue pipe, the rate of gas flow, and the number of elbows or the number of bends that's going to be in the flue pipe. Now, in the trade and you look at a lot of the manufacturer recommendations and stuff like that, you're going to see that they always are going to recommend that you keep your flue pipe as short as possible and as straight as possible. However, you always want to check with those manufacturer's recommendations on what you can and cannot do. Also, you need to make sure that you are following your local and national, international codes in regards to, to your venting, okay? So the rate of gas flow affects the amount of combustion air entering the furnace or boiler or whatever the heck it is that we're, we're dealing with. And the flow, this flow is going to affect, uh, is affected by the pressure difference between the combustion air entering the appliance and the flue gas leaving the flue. Uh, the temperature of the flue gas has an effect as well. If the flue gas is just too cold, it's not hot enough, it's going to travel more slowly up the flue. If it's too hot, it's going to travel too fast. Anyway, it's going to affect the furnace efficiency and, and its ability to burn all the fuel gas that we are trying to do. A chimney or flue pipe should extend at least two feet above the highest part of a roof. That is an actual international code. A chimney or flue pipe, if it's extending out of, a out of the roof, it has to extend at least two feet higher than the highest point of the roof. This helps prevent flue gases from flowing back into the chimney or flue pipe under certain wind conditions. Okay. If the chimney or flue is not properly designed or properly sized the way it's supposed to, you can actually have what's called a downdraft or a backdraft, which you can run into on some occasions on windy days where you might actually run into a furnace that's running and a big gust of wind happens to occur outside and you'll see the flame actually roll out at you or or away from where it's supposed to. So depending on the type of construction heating system installed, flue pipes can reach temperatures as high as 500 to 600 degrees. This is specifically true when you're dealing with oil. Uh, this can occur when you are dealing with your category one type uh, furnaces where we are have a low efficiency, like somewhere around 70%, because you got to remember our efficiency is based off of what is being put into the actual space for heating and what is being lost out the chimney. So like 70% uh, efficient furnace, you're only using 70% of the heat being generated to uh, heat a space. The rest of it's getting tossed out the chimney. So that's where we are getting a lot of these high temperatures. Uh, there are three types of flue pipes or chimneys that are going to be commonly used today. We have our Class A type chimneys, and those are basically nothing more than your masonry type. Your Class B chimneys um, are going to be your double wall metal pipe, or commonly known as B-vent. And then you have your PVC. Some venting systems will use a metal flex liner that is inserted into the entire length of a Class A masonry chimney. Before we are to do anything, if we are going to be installing a furnace and we're going to be penetrating into a Class A type chimney, we need to make sure that the chimney is clear 
and unobstructed of any sort of debris, such as mortar, tar, and creosote. If it is, and it has that stuff in there, that, furna, that chimney needs to be cleaned out. Once it is cleaned out, it needs to be checked for cracks, loose or missing bricks, uh, so on and so forth. Any repairs that are going to be done to that chimney before we put in that masonry liner has to make sure that we are ensuring a safe internal and external condition of the chimney. Okay, the existing chimney itself must provide at least a half inch of space between that metal flex liner and the masonry chimney. The liner must be properly sized to ensure good exhaust and good um, airflow movement throughout the, the chimney. And however, the best way to figure this stuff out is if you are putting in a metable, flexible liner into a masonry chimney, you have to think about and look at the manufacturer's installation instructions. And those instructions will provide specifics regarding the proper liner and starting up of the furnace and obviously checking for proper venting. Is it recommended that the homeowner does this? Absolutely not. Okay. Anything that is doing with HVAC should be done by a licensed, competent HVAC technician. With your uh, high efficiency furnaces, a conventional class A or B chimney is typically not needed as the flue gases leaving that appliance can be anywhere between 115 and 118 degrees uh, depending on the furnace that can vary uh, which means that your flue gases can be vented to the outside using PVC. We will also see on your high efficiency furnaces not only a flue pipe being exhausted but you are going to see a fresh air pipe also being brought into the furnace area which helps support combustion. That fresh air is often brought into the combustion chamber from the outside through another PVC pipe. And this can also be done by installing a single length of what we call concentric piping. That concentric piping looks like that. It's basically two pieces of PVC put together. The outer edge or the larger diameter pipe is where we would be bringing in our fresh air. The center pipe would be our exhaust. Okay, this actually kind of makes life a little bit easier for, for mechanics because now instead of having to run or cut two separate holes into the side of a home, we can now just take it and cut one larger hole onto the side of the home or onto the roof, run this nice concentric fitting per code and run our pipes to the um, to the furnace. However, if we are using PVC, PVC must be leak proof. Obviously it has to be sealed and properly installed with primer and PVC cement. Okay, we just cannot put it together like a Lego and take it apart whenever we feel like it. It has to be properly sealed. Since PVC is used on condensing gas furnaces, we also must make sure that we are ensuring proper drainage because remember, we have a condensing furnace now. Water vapor will accumulate inside the flue pipe, so we need to make sure that it is being drained properly. Uh, and also, we have to prevent from freezing. With the use of PVC pipe as a, as a vent, we need to make sure that the flue pipe is pitched one quarter inch per foot towards the furnace. So in other words, we want any sort of water that is accumulating in the flue pipe to drain back to the furnace so that we can drain it out. Okay, some other types of venting mechanisms that we may run into, especially if we're dealing with class A and class B type chimneys, we may run into what is called a draft regulator. This device regulator 
regulates the intake of indoor air into the flu to moderate or stabilize the flow of flu gases out the chimney. Your draft regulator sometimes is called a vent damper and can be controlled either thermostatically, mechanically, electrically, or barometrically. If we have a thermostatically operated uh, barometric damper or draft regulator, that guy is going to operate uh, open when a bimetal element senses and reacts to the heat of the flue gases. If it's electrically, it's going to operate with a motor, and that motor is now going to communicate with some sort of thermostat. So when the thermostat calls for heat, that barometric damper is now going to open. If it's barometric, um, it's going to simply operate based off of a pressure difference between the room air and the pressure inside the vent pipe.